So that's the kind of experience you can have in New Orleans that you just can't have anywhere else. You're walking along the street and suddenly... <laughs> There's a brass band playing on the balcony. Hey guys, we are Sean and Christy of Long Long Honeymoon. Today we're talking New Orleans, Nolans, the Big Easy, NOLA, the Crescent City. That's right. <laughs> New Orleans, Louisiana, the city with more names than any other, apparently. <laughs> uh, in this video, we're gonna talk about when to go to New Orleans, why to go to New Orleans, where to stay, and how to survive your trip. So we're in the French Quarter on Mardi Gras. In other words, on Fat Tuesday. Lots of people in costume. Lots of live music. It's an all day street party. And the whole town is invited. As far as when to go to New Orleans, I guess you could say any time's a good time, but the, the heat of the summer is probably something to avoid. Yeah. <laughs> so personally, I've been there spring, I've been there summer, I've been there autumn, I've been there winter, mm -hmm. and my preference personally is autumn. Yeah, I think spring or autumn are both good. Autumn, Sean wants to be there because of football season and everybody's watching football, so he's happy about that. In years past, I would have said not to go during Mardi Gras because it's crowded. But we went this last year for Mardi Gras and it was so much fun. We had the best time. So I have to say, if you can go and be there during Mardi Gras, you should do it. Happy Mardi Gras. Happy Mardi Gras. We are deep in the lion's den. Many people, including many longtime Louisiana residents, fear the French Quarter on Fat Tuesday. But at the moment, it's about 6 o'clock in the evening, and it's a great place to be. Yeah, I've been at times in Mardi Gras, it could be very cold, it could be rainy, mm -hmm. or it could be warm, sunny, and beautiful, and it was that way for us yeah. recently. It was about 78 degrees and sunny. Something to know about New Orleans, it sits really kind of below sea level, and so the humidity is very thick, and when you go down there in summer heat and you got that thick humidity, it's like being in a giant outdoor steam sauna, okay? <laughs> so I'm out near the bayou, kind of a beautiful bayou scene behind our campsite. Personally, I would not stay here in the heat of summer. Yeah, I can only imagine there's probably lots of mosquitoes and insects back here that time of year. But in the other times of year, especially in winter time, it's still beautiful and no insects really whatsoever. Why do you go to New Orleans? Now, to me, New Orleans is one of the best cities in North America from a tourist standpoint. You go for the unique culture. Mm -hmm. The whole state of Louisiana is totally different from the rest of the United States mm -hmm. because of that French heritage. You know, they even use different law in Louisiana. It's a, it's, it goes back to the Napoleonic Code. So New Orleans and Louisiana law is derived from French law instead of English law. Uh, I'm a law school dropout if you didn't guess. <laughs> but it's just different there. And you may think that you know, for example, Cajun food and New Orleans food. Well, if you haven't had it there, you haven't really had it yeah. because it's not just about the recipes, it's about the locally sourced ingredients, mm -hmm. it's about the water that they use to prepare the food in, mm -hmm. and so it's just 
different there. Pan seared gulf fish of some sort. I can't get this at Captain D's. Man. Make us luck. You can get this at Captain D's, but only in the parking lot. <laughs> <laughs> this is different between New Orleans and other cities. That's the way bread was meant to be. Turtle soup, topped off with dry sherry. So you have chosen wisely. <laughs> the filet. It looks delicious. Yeah, it does. It smells amazing. So we are going to have banana foster. And it's about the people. New Orleans culture is so unique and they have that Creole vibe, you know, and when you meet somebody that is born and bred in New Orleans or in Cajun country, you will know because they have the, the thick accent. They just have certain things that they say that nobody else says. Like if they're going to the grocery store, they don't say, I'm going to the grocery store. They say, I'm going to make the groceries. Right, <laughs> they kind of have their own unique vocabulary. Right. And the city has such an incredible history and you can feel that history when you stroll the streets. Yeah. The heart of the tourism of course happens in what's known as the French Quarter. It's smaller narrow streets they sort of have that French look to them and that they have sort of the wrought iron railings and the, the balconies and all that sort of thing. A lot of the buildings have central courtyards, um, which is unique. Not a lot of other places in the U.S. have buildings like that. You just feel the age and the heritage, and there aren't a lot of places in the U.S. where you really feel that. It's a place where you go to be a pedestrian mm -hmm. and stroll the sidewalks, walk the streets, and there's a surprise around every corner. So we just saw a house. I mean, it's easy to forget there are people actually living down here in the French Quarter. In New Orleans, there's always a party, right? It seems like there's always something going on in the French Quarter, uh, always a reason to celebrate. <laughs> so many just like really fascinating stores and shops. I mean, they're incredible antique stores. Yes. Not that you would be buying antiques, but just to go in and look at the antiques. Amazing antiques that are just jaw-droppingly gorgeous, insanely expensive. $175,000. For that chest. For this buffet. Well. That's why it's behind the rope. This ain't no Ikea, lady. I mean, just yeah. to go look is fascinating. Mm -hmm. And then, uh, you know, New Orleans is one of the few places in the country where you can grab a cold beverage and go for a stroll down the street and you're not going to be hassled by anybody. Yeah. The city expects you to do that. Mm -hmm. So one of the places that I think we usually go when we're in the French Quarter that makes you really feel the history is Lafitte's Blacksmith Shop. And it's now a bar. It is the oldest bar in North America, if I'm remembering correctly. So when you go inside, it's all candlelight. So if you're there at nighttime, it's really dark. All the candles are burning. Uh, if you're there in colder weather, they have a fireplace. You really feel like, wow, this may be what it was like back in the late 1700s, you know? 
And another place we enjoy going is Pat O'Brien's mm-hmm. Piano Bar. It's always a fun atmosphere in there. I mean, they have uh, a couple of grand pianos set up, and they always have really talented musicians up there taking requests, of course. It's a place where you go to kind of sing along with the crowd right. and uh, drink a hurricane or whatever. Yeah, that's their famous drink is the hurricane. It's not my favorite, but Sean likes to drink it sometimes. Yeah. So this is the glass that your hurricane will come in. Uh, you know, these are are very reasonably priced at only like eighty dollars for uh, for this little suit. No, I don't know. What it is. They're like seven dollars. <laughs> yeah, right? hand grenade. The other famous drink on Bourbon Street is the hand grenade. If you are not a drinker, I suggest that you take it very slowly with the hand grenade because it will knock you on your backside, your buttocks area. <laughs> Even if you are a drinker, I suggest that you pace yourself, pace yourself. <laughs> go slow, <laughs> yeah. because uh, things can spiral out of control in New Orleans, and we've certainly yeah. witnessed that. Street or a mixture of spilled beer, liquor, blood, and other bodily fluids. You really don't want any exposed skin to touch the asphalt here. The other reason that you go to New Orleans is the food. We've talked about that earlier just for a moment, but some of the best food in North America is in New Orleans. And some of the places that you go for the best food aren't the white tablecloth type of places. They're the hole in the wall where the same lady's been making the food for the last 30 years. So Mother's is one place that I can recommend for that. Yeah, a lot of people might not like Mother's, but it's kind of a what we call in the South a meat and three restaurant mm-hmm. where you get your, your meat and your three vegetables, and it's just sort of old-fashioned home cooking, home-style yeah. cooking. I get the, I think it's just called the Mother's Sandwich. It's like a famous sandwich that they're known for. It's really good. If you want a fancy meal mm-hmm. on Canal Street, you can go to Palace Cafe, mm-hmm. and it's affiliated with Commander's Palace. Commander's Palace is is one of the most respected restaurants probably in North America. Well, yeah. They have like a, a spinoff that's closer to the French Quarter called Palace Cafe. And the food, the service, the atmosphere, everything there has always been fantastic any time that we've been there. And then brunch at the Quarter Two Sisters is a very famous place to visit and have jazz brunch. They're known for that. So there are a lot of places to choose mm-hmm. from in the quarter. I would say you almost can't go wrong. Yeah. And you certainly don't need to be in a white tablecloth place either because, I mean, you'll have some of the best meals maybe in the less formal, stuffy places. Pasta manga with crawfish. You kind of get an instant attitude adjustment when you step out on Bourbon Street and when you stroll the French Quarter. You can smell the cooking, you know, you smell the great food. You smell some other substances being burned around here. (laughs) Yeah, and the later it gets in the night, if you're a night owl or early morning, if you're a morning person, you've got to go for beignets and coffee at Café du Monde. You may have had a beignet somewhere else in your life, but I guarantee you it won't be as good as Café yeah. Dumont. And they're famous for their chicory coffee, so if you're a coffee person, that might be right up your alley. I usually get Café au lait. That's like their chicory coffee with milk. Mm-hmm. And if you're not familiar with beignets, they're a French donut, basically, with powdered sugar. And there's Man, something they're so about good. It. Again, there's something in the water there. They're literally. cheap and they're good, and they bring them to your table, and they're just like covered in powdered sugar, and it's oh, it's so good. Fantastic. So good. 
So the other really famous place to watch some live music is Preservation Hall, and it's near Pat O'Brien's. They're not open all the time, but you can check their schedule online and see when they're gonna be there, and you'll see some really good jazz there. Now, where to stay? If you're bringing your RV, there are actually quite a few options around the New Orleans area. <laughs> Bayou Signet State Park is an interesting choice that's located outside the city. You're not going to walk to the French Quarter from here, but you will do some real camping on a Louisiana bayou. And the campsites are beautiful. They're quite spacious. They have uh, picnic tables and fire pits and so forth. And to get to the city, you're going to need to take a ferry across the water, or you're just going to have to drive. These campsites are not full hookup, however they do have water and electricity and there is a dump station on the premises. We specifically have stayed at Pontchartrain Landing. It's about a 10 minute taxi ride to the quarter from the park. It's a really nice park. It's gated. It's at a marina so there are also people there with boats. They have a really nice pool. They have a really great restaurant on site with good food. They also have a shuttle that's very reasonable reasonably priced that runs two or three times a day that will take you to the French Quarter and bring you back home. Yeah, so if you don't want to take a taxi, you can do the shuttle. Or one night we took the shuttle in. The last shuttle I think is like at 8 o'clock. So we took that in and then we just took a, a cab home. Or an later. Uber. You can also or an Uber. Uber. Yeah, we've done that too. So, you know, that's a great option. There are other campgrounds. There's one campground that is closer to the quarter. I believe it's called the French Quarter RV Park. It's in the city. So, you know, it's basically on a city corner and you know spaces looked tight no trees or anything like that but you are close enough in where you could walk into the quarter if you wanted to if you want to you know be within walking distance you could stay there um, and then there are two or three other RV parks I think that are a little further out than Pontchartrain Landing. Next, we're gonna talk about how to survive your visit to New Orleans. Mm -hmm. What the heck am I talking about? Well, it's gotta be said, New Orleans is not exactly Disneyland. It's not the safest town in America. Right. And my only point here is, you need to always maintain a sense of control and a, a sense of awareness of right. your surroundings. For sure. You know, New Orleans has always been a little rough around the edges, mm -hmm. frankly. I mean, yeah. there's a lot of crime in New Orleans. Yeah. So, I mean, we hear stories of tourists getting mugged and so forth down there. Mm -hmm. And we've never had any problems. And really, I don't think I've had any friends that have had any serious problems with crime there. No. When you live in Alabama, you sort of grow up going to New Orleans. It's one of those places. It's an easy car drive to get there. I went as a kid with my parents all the time. So, you know, when you're sort of familiar with a place, you've got your bearings and you sort of know what you're doing. But it's when people are coming from other states and, you know, just learning the area. And that's where you got to be careful. Hey, hey, roll tide, I would say during the day, you're probably totally fine. It's just those late night hours if you're walking down a side street. Maybe it's best to go ahead and flag a cab and not try to navigate through the back alleyways by yourself or with just one or two people because that's when you're a target. If you're there during a particularly festive time of year, like Mardi Gras, there's going to be thick crowds. You got to watch out for pickpockets uh, because New Orleans is is infamous for the activity of pickpockets there. Mm -hmm. Beads. Woo. These are a currency in New Orleans, right? Yeah. And you know, people will do things for these beads. Ah! 
You don't want to know what I showed to get these beads. Crazy things. Crazy things. And so like if you're going to New Orleans for the first time and you're walking through the French Quarter, especially around Mardi Gras, you may be surprised. Exposed to some things. <laughs> I beg your pardon. <laughs> yeah. Would you may be really exposed to some people exposing themselves. Yeah, if that sort of thing would really offend you, I would avoid Bourbon Street because Bourbon Street is really the only place you're going to see that. Yeah. It doesn't happen anywhere else in the quarter. Bourbon Street is it. You don't have to show anything to get beads. There are nice people that will just throw beads if you smile and wave because trust me, I am not exposing anything How to anybody. How did you get anybody. those beads, baby? Well, I, <laughs> smiling and waving. Yeah. So there are people that will give you beads for that without having to um, be down and dirty. But just know that it does happen on Bourbon Street, so if you're not cool with seeing that, just avoid Bourbon Street. How'd you get those beads? Smile and wave! Smile and wave! So if someone would have told me in the past, go to Mardi Gras with your RV, I would have been like, mm, no because most people I know that have been to Mardi Gras in years past have said, oh, it's too crowded, there's too many people, it's too crazy, blah, blah, blah. We just happened to be passing through New Orleans the week of Mardi Gras, so we were like, eh, okay, we're here. You can't not go. Let's do it, we'll check it off the bucket list. If it sucks, we'll leave. If we love it, we'll stay. And I'm happy to report that we absolutely loved it. We had so much fun. The weather was great. It was like 78 and sunny every day. In fact, it was probably a little hot. Floats were incredible, crowds were great it wasn't too crowded you know it was just a great experience it was a lot of fun there was a lot of people out on the streets in costumes actually on fat tuesday you know all the mardi gras festivities lead up to fat tuesday the crowds were really cool. There were so many people in these amazing costumes all throughout the quarter. The parades were really cool the night before. We went to the one, I guess it was on Monday night, on Canal Street. And normally I would say don't go to Canal Street because that's usually where the rowdier people are. But we were sort of on the, the far tail end where it actually starts on Canal Street. So the crowd wasn't as thick as it was further down. And we didn't have any problems. But if you have kids or if you want a more calm down experience I guess you could go to the garden district and all the parades go through the garden district and it's much more family friendly you're not gonna have anybody flashing for beads or anything like that and I didn't even see that when we were on Canal Street did you see any of that flashing for beads yeah you know people I didn't see it. the only place I've ever seen that is on Bourbon Street so yeah I was deeply offended several times on Bourbon Street I'm sure you are it was awful and I'll just tell you, it's not just women that flash for beads, so just be warned about that. So Yeah, I mean, honestly, <laughs> I know that a lot of people would probably be offended sure. walking through the quarter during the height of Mardi Gras because you're going to see some crazy behavior. Mm -hmm. That's sort of part of it. I think you got to kind of know that going in. Really, I think the only crazy behavior is on Bourbon Street. You know, when you're in the rest of the quarter, you're in Jackson Square, yeah. Royale Street, you don't really... I mean, you'll see people dressed up in crazy costumes, but you're not going to see any half naked people or anything like that so shame <laughs> well <laughs> i don't know just kidding folks <laughs> but i thought it was a great experience and i would totally go back and take our rv we had a blast at mardi gras and never really felt uncomfortable we never felt claustrophobic from the size of the crowds and part of this is knowing how to navigate those streets and knowing not to put yourself into a situation where you might be uncomfortable. I mean, if right. you can tell that the crowd is getting too thick, get out of there, move right. on. And then Mardi Gras World is a really cool place to go. It's actually where they store Mardi Gras floats in the off season. So I don't know how many floats you'll see if you're there during Mardi Gras week because they're probably out getting ready to roll. But the Mardi Gras World is really cool because you can get up close and personal with the floats. You can actually climb onto some of the floats. They'll let you get on them and sort of see what it's like to ride a float. And it's just a really cool place to go. It's really unique because I can't think of anywhere else besides Mobile, Alabama that has Mardi Gras parades. 
like New Orleans. So Another really interesting, unique activity that you can do in New Orleans is to tour a graveyard. Yeah. Because New Orleans sits below sea level, the graves are housed above the ground. You can take tours that tour the graveyards. And of course, if you're there in the autumn, as I advised, you might go around Halloween time. Yeah. You know, New Orleans is a city with such history, you can almost see the ghosts yeah. walking the streets. <laughs> and so when you're touring around all these historic crypts, uh, it's really fascinating, yeah. you know. <laughs> and there are lots of ghost walks, ghost tours that you can do in New Orleans. And so, of course, late at night is the best time to do those because that's when it's really going to feel creepy and legitimate. <laughs> and so uh, it's just another fun thing that you can do while you're there. So, I mean, there, there's so much to see and do in New Orleans, and it's so unique. I think that's yeah. the thing about it. You can't go to any other state in any other city and get that kind of experience. Yeah. It's truly one of a kind. And so we really can't recommend it enough. I mean, just great food, great music, great people, and uh, just watch your back. <laughs> that's yeah. all I say. <laughs> Uh, and you're going to have a great time. So if you have any questions about our visit to New Orleans or if you want any recommendations, give us a shout, let us know. I'm going to be writing an article to pair with this video to post on our Long Long Honeymoon site where I will list some of these places that we mentioned. And if you are an experienced New Orleans visitor or local and you want to chime in with some advice for others, including us, yeah. please chime in in the comments, post a comment, let us know. You know, where are your favorite places to visit New Orleans? What's your advice with regard to making the most of a visit to the city? If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to our channel. It means the world to us when you do so. And until next time, lo lo ho. If you liked the video, give it a thumbs up. If you disliked it, give it a thumbs down. Feel free to leave a comment, and of course, don't forget to subscribe. So you're going to show us? What, these? Sorry guys, I tried. <laughs> How about you? Yeah, nobody wants to see that. You got the bigger beads, what did you do for those? <laughs> well, you don't want to know baby, that's before we met. <laughs> <laughs> I was a choir Just boy before we met. Mr. Innocent. I was a choir boy. Hey guys, if you like our videos, a great way to say thank you is to shop using our store on Amazon. You can find it at amazon.com slash shop slash long long honeymoon. Everything you need for your next RV adventure awaits in our store. But you don't have to just buy camping gear. You can use our store to buy anything that Amazon sells. When you make a purchase using our store, we receive a small commission. We're reinvesting those commissions into the production of our show. So a great way to support Long Long Honeymoon is to do all of your Amazon shopping using our store. And one other thing to remember, all purchases made in the Amazon store are completely private. So we have no idea who is buying what. So if you're looking to buy a new banana slicer, you now know where to go. Or a banana hammock. <laughs> I beg your pardon. I mean, I'm just saying. <laughs>